In this lesson, we're going to discuss the sculpting basics that you would see inside of Mudbox. Alright, so here we're inside of 05 underscore begin dot mud file. Okay, so you can find that in your project files folder if you want to uh, start out at this point. Now, whenever we begin the sculpting process, we want to remember that we want to sculpt large details first. We don't want to get into the meticulous details of creating the the little pitting that you would see in stone and things like that. We don't want to get into that just yet. We want to create the larger details first. So before we can start creating any of those larger details, we need to add more geometry. We need to subdivide this object. So to subdivide in Mudbox, you can hold down Shift and then hit D on the keyboard and that will add a new level of subdivision. And You can also see how many polygons that produces. Now you also notice that my wireframe is turned on. You can turn that on and off by hitting W. I like to work with my wireframe on at these lower levels. Now once I start getting into the higher levels, I'll go ahead and turn that off because it's really not as helpful. All right, so we've added in a subdivision level and we could come in and we could use some of our sculpt tools here. You can see that here. And whenever you're sculpting, you want to make sure that you are on a sculpt layer. Okay, so this is actually a sculpt layer here. So you want to make sure that you're, you're sitting there. And we could come in and we could use grab, which is basically allowing us to grab vertices on our object and just move those straight out. So what I could do here is start to just kind of pull out some of these uh, points on my pillar and create a little bit of a different shape. So we're just starting to play around with some of the silhouette. Okay, now I can hold down B to adjust my brush size. And if you are over your geometry, you can see that brush size increasing and decreasing. Now, if you do that same action out here with no geometry, so if I hold down B, you'll notice my brush size isn't showing. But I can tell my size right here um, along my parameters. Okay, so I always like to hover over the object, hold down B, and then just click and drag. Okay, now I'm using a Wacom pen tablet, and I would suggest doing the same thing if you're uh, doing any type of sculpting. It makes the workflow so much better. So uh, go ahead and hold down B to adjust that brush size. So I'm going to take it up to around 70 or so, and I'm just going to start to kind of pull some of these points around. Okay, pulling those out. Okay, and just creating a little bit of a different shape in my pillar. Okay, I might make it a little bit thicker around the base of it. Okay, and this is just kind of showing that some, maybe some of the bricks or something like that has shifted. And this object could be to the point to where it might even fall over. Okay, so just creating a little bit of a different shape there. All right, now this is sculpting in some of those large details. Uh, some other large details that we would bring in is actually trying to get that brick shape on our geometry. So we could come in here and we could start to reduce our brush size and we could use our sculpt brush and we could come in and we could start to kind of paint in some bricks and things like that but I would rather use a stencil okay stencils are a great way to use alphas okay or uh, black and white images grayscale images to uh, kind of paint in some detail here so let's go ahead and find our brick pattern and this is our stencil here that we're going to use and I'm going to go ahead and switch to my front view so I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to switch view okay and then go to front view and here is my geometry so I'm going to hold down alt and I'm just going to pan okay and I'm going to scroll back a little bit just to zoom out some and then let's make sure that we have our stencil turned on now you'll see that it's not showing up here let's hit Q okay and let's try to turn on that stencil again usually whenever you switch to a different view it might hide that on us. Okay. Now you'll also notice that our stencil is very, very large. So if I want to decrease that, I'm going to hold down S. And you can see those hotkeys right here. So I'm going to hold down S and then right click. And then I'm just going to move that forward to make those bricks about the size that I would like to see on my pillar. So something like this is going to be pretty good. Now another thing that's going to be a little difficult is the actual brick um, if I paint on it on the front, I'm going to have to rotate around and paint on the back side as well. 
So what I can do here is actually, actually grab my sculpt brush and I can go to my mirror options and I can actually mirror along the local Y and that will allow me to paint on the front and it will do the same thing on the back. So that's going to make things a little bit quicker. Now I'm also going to take my brush size up so I'm going to hold down B and just increase that brush size there. We won't go too high there. And then I'm also going to hold down M, and this is going to adjust the strength of my brush. So the higher that I go, the more effect I'm going to get out of my sculpting. So if I go ahead and I start to sculpt in this geometry, you're going to notice a couple of things. It's sculpting it out, but it's really not giving me that brick look. So what's happening here? Well, I'm going to hit Q to hide that stencil. What's happening is I don't have enough geometry on this. Now before I start doing anything, let's go ahead and hit Shift D. Let's take that uh, the, our polygons up. Let's go to something like level five. That m should give us plenty of room to work there. I'm going to hit W to turn off that wireframe. Now, before I start sculpting in my brick, let's go ahead and actually create a layer. So I'm going to call this my brick layer. Okay, so type that in there, and there's our brick layer. And then I'm going to turn on my stencil again. So hit Q. And now let's start to sculpt that in there. Now you can see those bricks showing up. Now, one thing that you want to be careful of is whenever you're sculpting this, it's pulling it straight out, okay, using our sculpt brush. So one thing that you want to watch out for is it's actually pulling it straight out, and it could be warping it in our local direction toward us, and we really can't see that. So let's switch to our perspective view by right-clicking away from the model. Go to switch view and then perspective. And let's come over to this side. And you can see how it's kind of protruded that out. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's just giving us a little bit of thickness there. And we just need to make sure that we uh, round that off on the sides as well. So now let's go ahead and go to our left view or side view here. I'm just going to pan that. And then let's hit Q to bring up our stencil again. Now you'll notice it's not coming up, so let's deselect that stencil and then go back to our brick. Now we need to make sure that we scale that up again. So I'm going to hold down S and I'm going to right uh, click and scale that in. And I'm going to try to get those bricks about the same size again. So that's fairly close right there. Okay, I'm just looking at the the lines where they match up on this brick. And if they don't match up exactly, it's okay because we're really going to be tearing up this this pillar. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to use my sculpt brush. Okay, got the same size. Let's go ahead and switch our mirroring though. Let's switch it from local Y to local X. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to sculpt in some of that detail. Get some more of that back there. Okay, so we get a nice neat little pillar here and it's okay if you get some of that brick up into the the actual pillar uh, base itself not a big deal alright so let's go ahead and turn off our stencil so I'm gonna scroll over here and go to off turn that off there and then let's go ahead and go to our perspective view switch to view perspective and take a look at our pillar so we've got that brick look to it might be a couple of things that you might want to uh, change up a little bit, but I like that overall shape. It's giving me a nice uh, silhouette that's pretty appealing, so I like that. So I'm going to stick with that. Alright, so it's looking pretty marred. We've got in a lot of those large details. Now we'd want to come in here and we'd want to do the same thing around the bases. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to use another stencil, and I'm going to find something that is a little bit chunkier and a little more distorted. Okay, so let's come in here and let's find something that's really going to um, change up the shape of that, that base of that pillar. And that, I think that looks pretty good, though, right there. So in our perspective view, you'll notice that the stamp or the stencil works a little bit differently. We can actually zoom in and out on our geometry rather than moving the stencil around. I don't really like to do that too much, though. I always like to adjust the stencil itself. So I'm going to... Uh, scale that in there and then I'll zoom in on my geometry and do what I have to do there so I'm going to pull that back out okay so let's let's go ahead and um, take our stencil and let's scale that out there something like so 
I also rotated that a little bit by accident, and that was just by holding down S and then pushing the pen down or left button, okay, your left mouse button there. So let's go ahead and sculpt this out, and you'll notice that I'm getting a lot of detail in there. So if I hit Q, it's really creating too much detail, okay, and I don't like that. I want it to, um, I want it to be subtle. So I'm going to take my strength down. So let's hold down M. Let's take that strength down. And then we'll back up a little bit. Let's hit, uh, let's turn our stencil back on. So I can actually hit that, turn that on there. Okay, or you can hit Q, same thing. And then let's go ahead and paint that on there a little bit more. Okay, so it's bringing that detail out. It's pretty subtle. So we don't have to worry about that too much there. Now whenever we're working in this perspective view, okay, we also want to make sure that we have some mirroring going on, okay, just to kind of work this detail out. So it is being mirrored to the other side. Go underneath here, and if that gets too distracting, you can always hit Q, and then just paint right on there. It's going to remember your stencil. Okay, so let's Go ahead and paint that on there. And I'm sorry, I hit uh, Q to hide the stencil. Um, whenever you paint, it's not going to paint that stencil on there. I misspoke there. Um, so let's go ahead and paint a little bit more here. That does become a little distracting at times, but I always hold, hit Q to just kind of get my positioning. Hit Q again to start painting, and then it'll disappear there. Okay, so we're getting that that detail that we wanted out of this. Okay, let's go on top here as well. And let's start to just kind of add that subtlety to that shape. Hit Q. Okay, that's not too bad. Now I can come in and I can smooth that out by holding down Shift and just kind of smoothing out some of that that really rough detail just to kind of even it out. We're going to add some more layers on top of this so it's not really that big a deal. Now, I just said layers, and I looked at my layers, and I realized that I'm still on my brick layer, okay? So that could be a little bit of an issue uh, because we've sculpted that there. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just deal with that, and I'm just going to add a new layer. And let's just call this uh, base, okay, for our pillar bases. And we could come in, and we could hit Q. And we could go ahead and do the same thing around here along the bottom. Just kind of bring in some of those t larger details. Making that look like stone. Okay. Now this could also be considered a fine detail. But this is something that is just going to kind of give me a, a base texture on my geometry. Okay. On my, my sculpt here. And so it's not anything that's going to be the top layer of all my detail here. Okay. Finer detail is going to be things like um, creating specs and things like that. Now I could also come in here and use my wax tool and kind of build up geometry. So I can come in here and I can start to um, you know, add more um, detail in areas so I can kind of build things up kind of create things like uh, rocks sticking in there. Let's go ahead and turn off our mirroring though. I'm actually going to take a chunk out of this geometry. So I have my wax. I'm going to hold down control and you'll see that that begins to push in. Okay, and that becomes uh, some more of that chunky detail. Now whenever I start to create details like this, um, this should be getting a little bit more a um, little bit more into the subdivision, so let's hit Shift D. We're adding a new subdivision. Notice that we can't work on our base or our brick any longer because those belong on subdivision level five. So let's add a new layer. Okay, and let's call this um, let's call this chunks. Okay, so we're just going to be taking out some chunks out of our pillar here. So I'm going to hold down Control, and I'm just going to come in and just start to kind of mar this up a little bit taking out chunks of the concrete, creating different levels, and we'll come in and we'll start to work some of those areas. Now you can come in and you can have all kinds of fun uh, with this, okay? So you don't have to 
really stick with what I'm doing. Okay, you can do whatever you like. I'm just trying to show you some of these larger details that you want to bring in. Now notice we're not getting highly detailed with any, any of this. We're kind of just blocking this in. And that's really the stage that you want to work on in this area. Okay, so you can come in, you can start to kind of knock out some of these bricks and really start to add some of these chunks in here that are taken out of the, the brick itself. Okay, and out of the base. Now, on the lower portion of the pillar, you're going to get a lot of these areas that are just knocked out because it's lower to the ground, and you're going to get more contact from humans or, or whatever it is, okay, wherever this belongs. Okay, whenever things fall down, they're probably going to hit the bottom of the pillar more than the top, okay, because it's closer to the ground. Okay, that whole gravity thing, okay just things to think about whenever creating details.